Hey everyone, welcome back to the BWID Talk podcast. We are Wes and Jan, and we're so glad that you're here. If you're passionate about Volkswagen or just EVs, make sure to hit that subscribe button now. And don't forget, you can catch us on your favorite podcast platforms like Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, or Overdrive. And of course, here on YouTube for a more visual experience. Um, Jan, if you were going to say what is the most frustrating, most often complained about thing with the ID4, what would you say those things are? I think I can think of maybe two or three of top ones. Well, I think it's that the, the, the most confusing one is that it's electric, right? No, you cannot put yeah. a gas into it. Who would buy an electric car? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I missed that. No, I yeah. think the two most bothersome things are the touch buttons and especially the ones on the steering wheel. Yes. And I know you've been very passionate about that. And yes. I'm also passionate about those other buttons in yes. uh, for Windows. So we have only two window switches. That's, yes. Um, and those things are complained about so often by journalists. And I, I hate them both so much. I love my car, but I, I think it's a toss up. I could go either way. Um, so Jan and I each took one of these topics and Jan did the harder one. Um, I, I took a lot of research on mine, but we were able to mostly successfully uh, put real steering wheel buttons onto our ID4s. And uh, we're going to do a deeper a dive into that later. Uh, today, we're going to give you a brief overview of what we've done uh, just to get people excited about it. And then we can show you more about it. But uh, you can see on your left there before, which is your normal ID4 with capacitive touch buttons. And on the right is after, and that is my ID4 with real push buttons from a VW Atlas. And uh, they work. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and I've already had many happy drives with it where there was less cursing because I had these buttons and it was a, it was a pretty good thing. So, And, and I must say I did... I did the same because you, thank you for sending me those buttons. So I did the same oh, thing yeah. um, a couple of days ago and I had a couple of drives with these buttons and I was so amazed that I could, I can change volume without looking at the switch because it's just muscle memory. I know where to go and I can very quickly change volume without, without looking the same for uh, skipping tracks or uh, maybe changing the distance in the um, car in the front of yeah. me. So it's really amazing. Uh, well, first of all, I guess why real steering wheel buttons? Most of you, if you're reading this and you don't have an ID4, maybe you don't know the frustration. A lot of auto journalists have been on and on and on about the mainly the window switches. Uh, I thought the capacitive buttons were something that I would just get used to and it would be okay. Um, and they mostly were except when they weren't, which is, when I'm driving and turning the steering wheel and I did my finger would just brush the capacitive button and my radio station would change. Um, and then, and I swore this was happening sometimes when I didn't brush it. And finally I confirmed it sometimes just the capacitance of me moving my hands along the steering wheel would change the radio stations. And at least on two occasions, I accidentally activated the cruise control and the car started accelerating, uh, which is dangerous. So the main reason though is, the first one I just said, no accidental changing of your audio tracks or activating your cruise control. The second one is what Jan just mentioned. You can use your buttons by feel instead of looking away from the road. Once you learn where they are, the volume controls your most often, and that's you can feel it. You don't have to look. And then finally, you get better tactile feedback when you have pushed the button. You feel it press in. You know it's accepted because the haptic motors, yeah, you know, a nice satisfying click. Um, oh, yeah. Listen, I mean, so great. Um, sometimes you can't always feel the haptic feedback on the capacitive touch buttons. So, uh, yeah, I think those things, those are the basic things. I didn't feel like they bothered me that much, but they did. So we're going to go on to the yawn retrofit process here. And that is, is it mechanically feasible? Okay. Is it electrically feasible and what kind of coding or adaptation is required? Um, so this is a little chart that Jan put together. And as far as mechanical feasibility, it is a direct fit. No modifications required. You just need to, you need a new trim piece and you need the buttons. You screw the two things together and they literally slide right in. Electrical feasibility is also perfectly easy. It uses the existing wires. You unplug your old ones and plug your new ones in. And adaptations are easy. There's only a few things you can change. Um, but actually doing the whole project is difficult. 
And the main reason for that is that you have to remove your airbag. Um, and that is not something we're going to show you how to do here. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, you should have a professional do it because our warning down here says if you cause your airbag to blow, you could seriously injure yourself, particularly if your face is right up against the um, right near the airbag. And if you're lucky enough not to injure yourself, it would cost you a lot of money to replace it. They are not inexpensive. So make sure you know what you're doing if you're going to do that. The other thing is we have this mostly working. This is still a work in progress. we got some things to tweak. But the old buttons communicate via the LIN bus. The new capacitive touch buttons communicate via CAN. I have so far, with Jan's help, not been able to locate a set of buttons that communicate that are push buttons that communicate over CAN. And so when you connect up the wiring harness from your steering wheel and those two CAN pins are active, it causes your horn to sound constantly, which is not good. Uh, so you can't have that. So we had to modify that and remove the CAN pins. And hopefully that is something we can find a workaround in the future. So leave us a comment if you know of a set of these physical push buttons that actually communicate over CAN. They would be from a newer model. We were exploring, yeah, they look like this. We were exploring the new 2025 Tiguan. Uh, the new GTI has push buttons. The new Golf R does not. It has the capacitive touch buttons. And Volkswagen said that's because they couldn't get the R button programming to work with the push buttons for some reason. So the new Golf GTI, the new Tiguan, they all have uh, have push buttons. So what I would uh, uh, say that we also are linking down below the link to the VWID talk discussion about this specific topic. And we will yep. be posting updates um, as we learn. So feel free to post down in comments if you know um, the workarounds or solutions or help us move move uh, faster, please. Gotcha. All right. So this can be done. That's the good news. And it works and it makes me very happy. Um, so the next thing is we're going to get onto a video of me showing you how to pull off this trim. Because the buttons have a different shape than what you are was doing. You're removing the silver trim because the physical buttons, the new buttons that uh, you retrofitted, they have a yeah. different shape of a trim, but it perfectly fits into the steering wheel. Exactly. So you can't just replace the buttons. You have to replace the buttons and the silver trim. Um, and you can see we're missing that little black piece of trim on the bottom there, which you'll see in a minute. Um, you do not have to remove your steering wheel from your car. I just did that so I could show it better in this video. You just need to apply firm and even pressure. I started with the bottom because those pieces are thicker and I used a little trim removal tool. You see that black plastic thing in my hand to kind of gently pry it up and just slow, steady pressure. We've got the video sped up here. Um, you don't want to break it so you can resell it if you need to, or you can put it back to factory state. Um, that is the one from the Atlas right there. And you see how it's got those spaces on the bottom of each side for the volume and the track change and the black trim in the bottom. But all those little pylons I'm showing you are exactly in the same place. And this just, if you pretend the buttons are in there, you just line it up and just put your hands on it and put even pressure and it pops right in. Um, so the physical part of it's really easy. Um, the last thing we want to show you is also uh, there is a tiny, tiny, probably 30 gauge wire in there. Oh, it's right I here. Cut, it's this yeah, one. Yeah, it is very, very small. And I believe that measures the capacitance of the steering wheel so it can tell if your hands are on it or not. That would be very easy to break. Please be careful. Yes, and it is embedded into the steering wheel. So if that wire breaks, you have to replace the entire uh, steering yes. wheel. So that's, yes. that would be sad. Yeah. And uh, also this wire uh, fits uh, right into the buttons, connects into the new buttons from the back. So mm -hmm. make sure before you press it, that, that happened to me a couple times when I pressed in the buttons, I of course forgotten to uh, co reconnect the wire. So oh, I no. had to remove the trim again. So don't make yeah. that mistake. <laughs> okay. So yeah, this is very, very doable. It's, it's a very satisfying mod. You can tell how happy I am about it. Jan's done his now. He's very happy. I think it improves the usability quite a bit and it looks completely stock. It looks like it came from the factory that way, which is kind of one of our uh, creeds here. Um, it is not prohibitively expensive. You pay us a few hundred dollars worth of parts. If we put together a kit, it might be three or $400, but it's, it's not super, super expensive. It's definitely doable. It is mechanically and electrically compatible with only small modifications and the easy software adaptations. 
The only downside is it requires the airbag removal and some some care when you do this. So uh, pretty excited about this. We're going to dig deeper into it. We'll, we're still a little bit of a work in progress, but follow us on the forum um, on this discussion and we'll tell you more about how this went. 100%. And, and please subscribe to uh, our channel. So you will also um, learn about the next mod, which is replacing these two window switches with real four window switches. Four window? Wait, no. Yes. You can't do that. But that's in the next episode. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, we will patiently wait for that episode. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Uh, follow us uh, on VWID Talk, as uh, Wes mentioned, and also check the direct link to the discussion on VWID Talk about this specific mod. So um, you can chime in with uh, your uh, research, with your ideas, with your questions, and we can uh, together work on this uh, faster. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks.